Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector. Every Wednesday, Mark, along with his special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark is a tested, certified, and professional spiritual medium, metaphysical teacher, healer, and spiritual advisor with a spiritual practice based in Seattle, Washington. You are the inspired and the inspiration. And good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be in this beautiful planet of ours. Welcome to Inspired Living Radio. I'm your host, Mark Lane Hart, the Intuitive Prospector, back for another inspiring, encouraging, motivating episode of Inspired Living Radio, where we're going to have our special guest coming back for a second time, Mr. Jonathan Glass, as we talk about his new, well, it's not his new book, but it's we've had him on before. But when you revisit it, it's like reading a, a new book for the first time, The Total Life Cleanse, a 28-day program to defox, detoxify and nourish the body, mind, and soul. So as we begin this uh, episode, we're going to be diving into the body, mind, and soul and a total life cleanse. And Seneca reminds us, as long as you live, keep learning to live. And a little bit about Jonathan coming back to us. It's been a couple years, but he was on Inspired Living Radio a few years ago. Jonathan Glass is the author of The Total Life Cleanse and co-creator of The Total Life Cleanse program. He is a master acupuncturist, an Ayurvedic practitioner, energy healer, herbalist, and natural health educator. For over 20 years, Jonathan has facilitated both individual and group-supported transformational cleanse programs for thousands of participants. He has also served on the faculty of the New England School of Acupuncture and the Dharma Academy of Yoga in Ayurveda. Jonathan has been in the private practice since 1987 when he co-founded the Healing Essence Center, which is a multi-practitioner healing center with his wife, Catherine, who I know very well, hi Catherine, in Concord, Massachusetts. Uh, he's gonna have a couple events coming up here in September, so you're gonna wanna go to a couple websites to uh, one, either get the book or to check out his events coming up in both uh, late September and in October where he's doing some classes online via Zoom. Those websites are going to be healingessencecenter.com or totallifecleanse.com. Those will be the two websites that you can go to. And then, of course, the book that we're going to be discussing today, you can get that on Amazon or you can get it right from uh, the healingessencecenter.com website. So with that, Jonathan, how are you, my friend? Welcome back to Inspired Living Radio. Thanks, Mark. I'm, I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, so it, it's nice to revisit a book. Uh, you were on the show a couple years ago, and we talked about this Total Life Cleanse. And I think the book had just come out at that, that, that time, That's if right. I remember yep. correctly. I want to say 2018, uh, so about three years right ago. Right around then, yep. Yep, Yeah. You got it. And, uh, I've got it in my digital library, so you know when uh, we're bringing you back for a second episode, I open the book and it's again just kind of revisiting the knowledge and the wisdom of this uh, great book. And let's just talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about the journey of how this all unfolded for you, and, and we'll get into more of the details of the book and some of the chapters I found fascinating. Uh, but just uh, connect with our inspired listeners all around the globe and tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, great. So. Yeah, I'm a, like you said, I'm an acupuncturist and Ayurvedic practitioner. And I got into this, I started pretty young. And I had um, pretty serious, or I'd say very serious allergies and lung issues pretty much since I was an infant. And when I was in high school, I was going to a summer camp every year and um, discovered the book Be Here Now with a friend of mine. And we started meditating. So at the age of 15, we started meditating pretty much every day at camp and discovered that it really had a very powerful impact. And, of course, this was a sports camp, so I found out things like I could hit the baseball better, 
I was more comfortable socially. I was more, you know, tuned in on the soccer field. You know, all kinds of things, benefits. And um, a couple years later when I was in college, I then discovered the connection between some of my health issues and, uh, and, and soccer and my energy. I was having some real problems breathing, um, playing soccer. I played varsity soccer, but I would run into these issues of what I look back now, they were really actually not just bronchial infections, but asthma attacks and uh, changed my diet radically and my whole life changed. And um, so the combination of meditation, realizing that that had a reality to it at a pretty young age, and then connecting to the reality that diet was meaningful, and then I got into yoga, and I was applying this all to, you know, to my inner life, but also to how it was impacting my, my outer life, and it made a real difference. And at some point, I was in my early 20s, and I just really had this knowing. It was like a light went off, and I don't really, when I look back, I kind of wonder how I even knew, but I just knew that this is what I wanted to get into professionally. It wasn't super mm -hmm. popular back then, but it was just one of those knowings, and went on to study Ayurveda and acupuncture, yoga, herbs, and um, it's a never-ending process, which is one, one thing that's really wonderful about it. You can, there's always more to learn. So yeah, it's like that's my story in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's just so much exactly. knowledge. And like I said, in the first episode that you were on, we only just covered just a little bit of the book. So I thought it would be great to have you back and go in more depth into the book because, yeah. you know, the Ayurveda knowledge alone, you could spend hours talking about the different concepts and that knowing that you mentioned. We had a guest on uh, last episode, uh, which was a 9-11 uh, anniversary special to talk about 20 years later. And he talked about that knowing of not getting on the train that actually saved his life because he was actually supposed to be up in tower two on the 81st floor and by listening to that knowingness that intuition that inner voice that higher consciousness whatever you want to call it god he didn't get on the train and then he let three other trains pass and that was the difference of saving his life and putting him on a different path just like it did for you that inner voice that inner knowing and, you know, in the book, you talk about there's a couple of great quotes that you bring on each chapter. And the one I, I love, the Zen proverb, when walking, walk, when eating, eat. And, of course, the meaning of life is to find your gift and the purpose of life is to give it away. And that's from Zig Ziglar. And mm -hmm. that's what you're doing with this book. You're sharing a lot of your knowledge. So let's talk about that higher consciousness, that knowingness, uh, that higher self, whatever you want to call it. What, what would be the connection between health healing and what you practice and this higher consciousness that we're talking about? It's a great question. So, yeah, I mean, first I'll say in the system of medicine called Ayurveda from India, Veda means knowledge, Ayur means life. It's inherently, uh, it's, its foundation is spiritual rather than biochemical. So it starts out acknowledging that we are you know, we're, they call it Atma, we're pure consciousness, um, and that we have a, uh, what's called the super soul within, or, or the Atma, the Paramatma, the transcendental uh, soul within all of us, and um, we all have that capacity to make that inner connection. And um, there's a word, Buddhi, that most people know the word Buddha, but Buddhi means innate intelligence. So, we're born with an, this innate intelligence. We're born with this intuitive capacity. We're born with this capacity to connect to our inner uh, inner guide. It's also called Chaitya Guru, which means the guru within, the teacher within. So the whole system of, the, of medicine, and it's a very vast system of medicine, very sophisticated, uh, very scientific in many ways, but it starts out with that orientation. Um, that, that, that that's what a human being uh, is and what the human being, the potential of the human being is that we can connect in that way. So there's a really powerful word in Ayurveda called, it's pragya aparad. And um, you don't have to repronounce that, but pragya means knowledge, <laughs> experience, or wisdom. And aparad means to offend or go against. So Ayurveda <laughs> says that the cause of all disease ultimately is when we actually go against our own inner knowing, our own inner being, uh, that intuition, and also our experience. 
I mean, sometimes it's just good old experience. You know, we, if we put our hand in a fire and we think if I do it 20 more times, maybe, maybe the 21st mm -hmm. time it won't be hot. Um, you know, it, it's, that's experience or not following our experience. So Pragyaparad, when we offend our own uh, wisdom, experience, intuition, we get ourselves into trouble. So it's a very, you could say, essential and important thing to, to reconnect to that. And in one sense, that's what the cleanse is about. And that's why we call it the total life cleanse, because the idea is when we clear the, when we clear the plate, when we uh, clear the, the senses, the mind, and we take away some things that are kind of causing some disturbance energetically, physically, mentally, uh, in the consciousness. When we do that for a little bit of time, what happens is that there's a tendency to be more connected and more tuned in to what our inner voice is and what that inner wisdom is. And also being more interested in information that actually nourishes that connection and nourishes our health and body, mind, and spirit. So it's, there's a very, very strong connection to that. And um, in one sense, in Ayurveda, it says we, you know, to the point that our health will only go so far if we don't, you know, in some significant way, make, begin to make that connection. Fascinating. So we're going to really dive into this book. And for our inspired listeners out there all around the uh, planet, we're not taking any calls today because we have just too much uh, spiritual awesomeness and, and healing points to get to within this book and our special guest today, Jonathan Glass. So we won't be opening the phone lines for any of our inspired listeners, but you can always post a question on our social media pages, which on Facebook is Inspired Living Radio, and you can join the global community from inspired listeners all around the planet. You can also follow us over on Instagram and Twitter under the handle Inspired For Us. That's the number four, Inspired For Us. So if you do want to post a question, we'll be kind of uh, monitoring those pages. Uh, the team will be looking at those if you have any questions, uh, but we're not doing any open phone lines today because I have a lot of questions and I really want to dive deeper into this book and talk about things that we didn't get to last time, Jonathan. And one of the things based on what's currently going on in our society, uh, especially with uh, the global warming, this pandemic, the politics, all of the transformations that are taking place uh, in your chapter of our modern condition, you talked about the six stressors, and, and at the top of that list was mental and emotional stressors. And I think a lot of our listeners out there are feeling that right now, the mental distress, the emotional stressors. So before we go to our first break here in just a few minutes, let's start talking about that because that's really applicable to what's going on in society right now. Right. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Um, you know, we have, we have this thing called the, the, the nervous system, and there's two parts of it, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. And the sympathetic is like the go mode of the nervous system, and the parasympathetic is the slow mode. And that relates to the automatic functions of the body, digestion, uh, breathing, heart rate, things like that. So right now, so, much, so many of us are being overstimulated in the sympathetic nervous system, which when it's taken to its uh, further extreme, that's the fight or flight. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways of looking at it. So for many people here listening probably know something about the chakras. So this parasympathetic nervous system is very connected to the first chakra, which then uh, it has to do with grounding, but also when there's lack of grounding, what's that? That's fear and anxiety. And so there's a tremendous amount of fear and anxiety. And in the atmosphere, and even in in Ayurveda, we talk about the five elements, and the the most subtle element, ether, sound vibration, is carried in ether, and thought form is carried in ether. So literally, you could argue that the fearful, anxious thoughts are are floating, are actually contaminating the ether element. Um, every sound, every you know, you could say every thought, every sound vibration that goes out there. Um, first floats through the ether element, and it can impact other people. So when a lot of people are anxious all at the same time, uh, it can really create, um, it, it feeds that anxiety in others. So it's a problem because when there's a lot of anxiety, that impacts the nervous system, which then decreases our ability to digest properly. It decreases our ability to uh, connect internally, spiritually, 
It, it impacts our emotional reactions, um, in, in, uh, ha- impacts our heart rate. It actually impacts how our cells receive sugar. <clears throat> you know, too much stress can actually uh, lead someone toward a diabetic state. So there's a lot of physiological things that are going on. And, of course, just mentally and emotionally, uh, it can be a real burden. So it's even more important uh, to take a break from the, uh, you know, from the the insanity and the craziness and the fear that's going on. It's really important to take a break from it and to nourish ourselves in body, mind, and spirit. And, uh, you know, I tell people, don't worry, you will hear you know, about the, the latest and, and most significant event, you know, probably 10, 15 minutes after, you know, it breaks out in some kind of show or new show or whatever. So we don't have to be immersed 24 hours a day or eight hours a day or five hours a day in what's going on on the planet. Yeah, we want to, you know, keep up with what's going on, but we have to take care of ourselves. It's really, really important. Yeah, it's like a, just an overload of information drinking from a fire exactly. hose, if you will. And yeah, you're right. Exactly. You know, I always talk about take the time to disconnect so you have the time to reconnect. And the practice of duality, exactly. Beautiful. Right? What's in the physical world and the practice of equanimity. We've had, we've talked about that on past shows. And there's just a lot going on. And so we're going to go to our first break and then we're going to come back and we're going to continue just to dive deeper uh, into this wonderful book, The Total Life Cleanse, a 28 day program to detoxify and nourish the mind and soul with our special guest today, Jonathan Glass. We'll be back here with more Inspired Living Radio. The future of Internet Radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Hello, listeners. We hope you're enjoying the shows here on Ohm Times Radio. Mark Lanehart here and host of Inspired Living Radio. And I'd like to invite you to my morning show of inspiration, encouragement, healing, motivations, transformations, and discovering that diamond within. Metaphysical Mocha Mondays every Monday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, over on the Intuitive Prospector Facebook page and my YouTube channel, Soul Adventures. Dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live, and discover that diamond within. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. Do you feel like your emotions are all over the place? That's normal during this abnormal time. There are a number of ways to cope. Maintain a healthy routine, get enough sleep, eat nutritious food, and exercise at least 30 minutes each day. Schedule some time to talk with a friend or family member. And remember, you can always take a few deep breaths to feel more centered. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Welcome back, everybody, to Inspired Living Radio. Today's guest, Jonathan Glass, coming back for another episode to inspire us, encourage us, and motivate us for his book, Total Life Cleanse, a 28-day program to detoxify and nourish the body, mind, and the soul. If you uh, missed the live episode broadcasting right now through the Ohm Times Radio Global Player, you can always catch encore episodes of Inspire Living Radio and through the several, whatever your favorite podcasting platform is, whether it's Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, iTunes, CastBox, SoundCloud, Deezer, the list goes on and on. Make sure to check us out. You can always find all the past 
seasons of Inspired Living Radio through Ohm Times Radio Media Archives. And Jonathan, let's just pick this back up right where we left off and talk about the stressors that we're all feeling uh, with our current modern condition. Sure. So do you want me to go through the, the, the stressors themselves? Yeah, so let's talk about the six stressors in the chapter, you know, starting with that sure. mental and emotional stressors, and then, of course, the dietary, the immune, the chemicals, Great. Sure. the scars, all of that. Great. So, yeah, so um, these, these stressors are the, some of the main things that interfere with our well-being, with our energy, we, we, which we call prana or chi, or vital life energy, bioelectric energy. Um, that interfere with cellu cellular function, and ultimately that there's always that body-mind, emotion, <clears throat> spirit connection. There's always that connection. So whatever is happening on a physical level is going to funnel into the mental, emotional, and whatever is happening in the mental, emotional, spiritual is going to funnel into the physical. So we, we know that for sure. So we talked about some of the mental, emotional stressors that are there. And by the way, it's kind of interesting because in the Vedic uh, astrological configurations that go for, they're very, very vast, but it's described that we are presently in what's called Kali Yuga. It's a particular age that happens to be fraught with the tendency toward anxiety. So it's even more important this age to, to really um, acknowledge that reality and, and do, our, do our best to manage it. Um, so then the other stressors, are, are, are the physical one is food. And many of us have uh, foods that we're actually sensitive to. And I don't generally call them food allergies, although they may be. But so many people are sensitive to certain foods. Um, a lot of times it's foods that we eat on a regular daily basis. For instance, many, many people are sensitive to modern wheat uh, as opposed to ancient wheat, einkorn or some of the older wheat grains. Um, they're denser, but they're far less problematic, and a lot of people have problems with modern wheat, and part of that is um, because of how they hybridized it. That really began in the 70s, and um, a lot of people have problems with modern dairy. Now, in Ayurveda, both wheat and dairy were considered wonderful foods, but the, the wheat, like I said, the ancient wheat is a different uh, protein structure than the modern wheat, and the dairy was from cows that uh, the protein structure uh, was very similar to human mother's breast milk, and it was called beta casein A2, which is talked about in my book. And a lot of the cows now, they've been hybridized and they've been, you know, cross-gened, and there's, they basically have created cows that are perfect for producing vast quantities of milk, but it's not necessarily the healthiest milk. So we, we've created some interesting problems in our food, um, you know, just that, that that's part of the reason why people get sick and why they don't feel feel good is because of the, the quality of the food that we're eating. And then, of course, there's the, the general sort of no-brainer things, which is too much refined sugar, too much alcohol, um, you know, uh, chemicals in the food, um, pesticides. Well, that, that gets more into the chemicals. But, you know, processed foods, corn syrup, refined sugar, um, basically... Uh, eating foods repetitively every single day, the same food after, day after day after day. A lot of times for people, those foods can become sensitive. But I would say the biggies are going to be wheat, dairy, sugar, and then for some people, alcohol. For some people, coffee. Coffee is not inherently bad, although I would highly recommend people getting organic coffee because coffee does tend to um, carry a ton, a ton of pesticides, the inorganic. They use a lot of pesticides for that. And then we get into uh, immune uh, stressors. And this is a sort of a different concept that people, uh, a lot of people aren't really aware of, that we can have viruses, bacteria, parasites, yeast, not just in the body in general, but stored in different tissues of the body. So, for instance, the liver tends to host a lot of viruses and sometimes parasites, and um, bacteria can be, uh, a lot of bacteria can be settled in the, in the spleen or in the sinuses and, as well as yeast. So identifying those stressors uh, can be really, really helpful. A lot of people don't know that they, they think, well, I, I keep getting 
uh, sinus infections, for instance. And for some people, it's not actually bacteria, but it's actually an imbalance of yeast, and they keep taking antibiotics, and they feel better temporarily, and then it just gets worse the next time. So there, there are ways of identifying that, and that's really important. But these stressors can, can linger with people a long time. So, for instance, people that have had mono or they have Epstein-Barr, um, these viruses can linger and can be aggravated for many, many years. I mean, you could live to be 100 years old, but just don't not feel um, as energetic as you'd like to with a lot of these viruses that, that linger. And there's definitely ways um, to help manage those and actually eliminate the viruses and certainly um, create a situation where they don't impact our lives. And then we have um, chemical toxins, pesticides, herbicides, cleaning products, things like that. There's over 80,000 chemicals in the environment that have never been tested for human safety. So there's a lot, of, a lot of chemicals that we're exposed to, and that really taxes the liver, especially in the kidneys. And then we have heavy metals. Heavy metals are another significant stressor. Um, mercury is very significant. Arsenic is, tends to be high. <clears throat> People that live near farms that use a lot of pesticides. Cadmium uh, is there. Uh, certainly in cigarettes, but uh, cadmium is in the soil. Um, lead, I mean, I just had a patient the other day who was exposed to lead as a kid, and it was still coming out of their hair, and it was still coming out of their, their body at this point in their life, and it can affect the joints and cause muscle pain and bone pain. And then we even have something called scar stress. There's a lot of scarring that people go through in their life, especially women with cesareans, and they may have a cesarean or an episiotomy. And those scars um, actually interfere with the nerve uh, information that's passed along the body. And also from an acupuncture perspective, it interferes with the bioelectric or the chi flows of the body. And the scars can trap the energy. So, for example, if a woman has a cesarean um, scar, then that central channel that goes all the way up through the stomach, up through the chest, through the throat, right through the thyroid, up into the top of the brain, uh, that channel, uh, if it's disturbed, can actually lead to or contribute to thyroid issues. And there's been cases where just handling that scar, the woman's mental or physical energy really improves, and even her thyroid numbers start to improve just by managing that scar. So there's a very strong connection with scar interference as well. So those are the main, main stressors. Um, there's other ones that are more, you know, esoteric and more subtle, but if we can handle those stressors to some degree, then people just automatically start feeling better, more energy physically, mentally, and just more connected to themselves. And I can speak truth to that because when you were on the episode, the first episode a couple of years ago, after I read this book, I actually was having some dietary issues myself, being a child of the 70s and growing up with wheat and corn and dairy, kind of those were kind of the staples. Since the time of our first show, I have actually gone completely off dairy now, uh, really kind of avoid the wheat, uh, the gluten, the intolerance to that. So my diet has changed and some of the uh, chapters in this book have been directly impacted in my life so thank you for that thank you for writing this book and oh, these applications and you know one thing i want to talk about too because i think it's important in the book you talked about conditioned accommodation which we see a lot of that in today's society on the on the media the social media um can you just touch briefly on that and then we're going to talk about why health matters beyond the body and what is health according to ancient wisdom yeah, condition, uh, condition uh, accommodation, it's an interesting thing. So here's an example. If you walk into a building that has a really bad odor, um, you may walk in and, and, and feel like, and this is t terrible, this is horrible, I can't stay in here. But if for some reason you had to stay in that building, within 15 minutes or so, you might still be able to smell a sniff of it, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a horrible odor anymore. You, you accommodate to it. So that's an example of what we do in many things in life. We accommodate. So we accommodate uh, even our diet. If we're eating something that creates an imbalance or makes us feel that actually is not optimal for us, it, it, it affects us, but somehow we adapt to it and, and we normalize that substance. So, and it happens on every level. So 
we could be living in a, in a stressful situation. And it may be an unsafe situation, or it may be in a slightly or, you know, to some degree abusive situation. But when we accommodate to it, it's like we use that word normalize. We normalize to it. We consider it normal. And we actually adjust. Our nervous system adapts to it on some level. And that's the, we end up living at that level of consciousness or we start living in that environment and as if it's okay. So... You know, that's why getting, like, like you were saying, Mark, earlier, I liked what you had said before. I forget the slogan that you said about, you know, disconnect to reconnect. If we don't do that, if we're always uh, connecting to the external and we're not connecting more deeply within, then what happens is that we, we do accommodate and we accommodate to everything around us and we accommodate to... You know, even how people now are, in some cases, communicating uh, with each other. I mean, just a, f- a few years ago, um, you know, nonviolent communication became such a powerful uh, source of information for many people on the planet. But now that we have dichotomies and different viewpoints and there's a lot of fear involved, and there's a lot of fear involved, Sometimes people throw away nonviolent communication, and, and rather than having open conversations and discussions, it turns into right. a, an argument or a debate because that's the normal thing. You know, on, on Facebook, it's normal to yell at somebody. Uh, it's considered okay. Or when you're driving, it's normal to you know, yell at someone through the window. So those things, these things become normalized, but that doesn't mean they're healthy at all. Um, so it, it really leads us again to that, we really, really, it's in one sense, now is the time to take the medicine of reconnecting to ourselves even more seriously. And it really, all of us, all of the, the people out there listening, um, myself, yourself, everybody, we have to, in one sense, if we want to, you know, this planet to move in a positive direction, all of us, no matter what perspective we may be ha- coming from, you know, on the pandemic or this or that, whatever, we all have to raise our consciousness. And if we don't agree on that, then, you know, then we're in trouble. We can have a different perspective on, from the material perspective, you know, this science, that science, whatever. But from a spiritual perspective, unless we, it's about consciousness, unless we all agree that we need to raise our consciousness and then deal with the problems rather than try to deal with the problems and then and say, oh, I'll raise my consciousness after we deal with the problems. Personally, I don't think it's going to work that way. I think we really need to, um, you know, to connect deeply and, and take it from that perspective. Yeah, well said. I, I, the, what I, my saying is make the time to disconnect so you have the time mm-hmm. to reconnect and the practice of duality, mm-hmm. just like you need mm-hmm. sleep, right? You need a break right. from the external world. And if you live in that external world, the nervous system is always consciously in a fight or flight and once you get into that disconnect that higher consciousness that homeostasis that's where you can practice the duality between the two and you know just with everything going on in the world that that transformation i agree with you you know from what i keep calling from politics to pandemic to pride we need to have this awareness of consciousness and then deal with the problems after that. And I think we're being presented with this, you know, this decade of transformation, what I call the Roaring Twenties. And I think this book is even more important now with the information and the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to go to our first break or our second break here. And just the show goes by so quick. Like I said, we want to get in all the good. There's so many good parts to get into this book. But before we go to our first break, just tell our listening audience why health matters beyond the body, not just within the body, that duality within also above, so below, but also within, but also outside the body. Mm. Well, health matters um, because the the reality is if we're, we'll take it from a perspective of vibration, if we're vibrating at a higher vibration and if we're putting things in the body that lower that vibration, um, and what I mean is, is processed junk food, things like that, that has a certain vibration to it. Anything that we put in, we do to the body, with the mind, it impacts our relationships. It impacts our mental clarity. It impacts how we feel internally, how we feel about ourselves, how we relate in our relationships. So there's, there's definitely going to be a ripple effect. 
And not only that, and this comes down to the Ayurvedic perspective, that we are actually pure consciousness, and we're, we're an atma, we're, we're a soul. We're, that, that's our true identity. The physical body will pass. I mean, that's, that's the, the situation of this particular planet um, at this time, is that the physical body will pass. So if we're only focused on the health of the body and forgetting about the health of our true being, then we kind of miss the purpose. We kind of miss the, we miss, we miss out on a big, you could say from the Ayurvedic perspective, it is the purpose of human life is to awaken to who we really are. And, you know, the body is a, a dear friend and we're meant to take care of it. And it's uh, in the best way possible. And we're meant to, it's even from an Ayurvedic perspective, we're meant to help the body live absolutely as long as it possibly can, as long as it's, you know, there's still some quality of life. But the reason we have a body is so that we can con- continue to cultivate love and c- cultivate real self-realization and awareness of who we really are. And then from that place, relate with other living beings too. So there, there's so much to say in that subject, but, but uh, I'll just leave it at that for now. <laughs> yeah, we're just like just scratching the surface. So we're going to go to our second break and we're going to come back. We're going to talk about one of my favorite chapters, which is chapter eight, which talks about Ayurveda, God and the five goals of life and, and the whole purpose of, you know, health according to ancient wisdom and why health matters beyond the body. So you're listening to Inspired Living Radio, our special guest today, Jonathan Glass, talking about his wonderful book today. We'll be back here in just a few minutes of Inspired Living Radio, where we make the time to disconnect so we can make the time to reconnect. The cutting edge of conscious radio, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free at ascendinghearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, Radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk Walk a mile mile in my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Mindfulness helps us go home to the present. 
Vic Han reminds us of that quote. Today's special guest, Jonathan Glass, talking about his wonderful book, Total Life Cleanse, also known as TLC, not the group TLC, but Total Life Cleanse, a 28-day program to detoxify and nourish the body, mind, and soul. Let's just keep going, Jonathan, because we're going to run out of time, and I have so much information that I want to get to for our listening audience and even just my sure. own curiosity. My favorite chapter, chapter 8, um, you know, just for the fact of the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda, and, you know, like I said, we could spend hours, but let's talk about, you know, just what is health according to the ancient wisdom. Sure, so health according to ancient wisdom, there's there's physical, mental, spiritual health. There's different, you could say there's different types of health. Um, from the ancient perspective, like I was saying before, um, health is the uh, removal of obstacles, the minimization of, of energetic obstacles to the, to the uh, optimization of our self-expression and our divine potential. So that's a, 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 that's a maybe a complicated way of saying Basically, we're, we're human beings. We're, we are a, I'll, I'll say soul. That's why I use the word soul. I, I use the word soul not in a religious way, but in a spiritual way. That the soul is the same thing as the atma or pure consciousness or that spark of life that mm -hmm. is, from this perspective, eternal. It's called sat chit ananda. It's eternal. Eternal means ever present. Uh, never goes away. Always present. Uh, chit. Uh, full consciousness, awareness, and ananda means love or bliss. So that's really the nature of our true self. And we happen to have this covering of what we call the five elements, which make up the mind, sorry, the physical body. And then we have the subtle body, which is made up of the mind, intelligence, and ego. And the ego is not a bad thing. The ego is how we identify with <clears throat> ourselves in this life. And then as we grow and live and spiritually develop, then the ego becomes purified and begins to, um, rather than just serve our selfish needs, uh, serve the needs of our true self, of the soul, and which actually means we end up serving other living beings, other, uh, other, other living entities. And then we begin to serve the interest of the creation itself. And the source of that uh, interest comes from pure love. So... Real health, you could say, is removing the obstacles to love and nourishing those parts of ourselves which, which are pure love and doing whatever, whatever we can to do that. And the interesting thing is that when we lovingly take care of our bodies and our minds and our relationships, even our things, if even the work that we do, if we simply accept that that work has been divinely, in one sense, ordained to us. This is considered, from a Vedic perspective, <clears throat> a form of worshiping the divine. Like, this is where gratitude comes in. If we're simply, I remember one time in my life, I was really upset with my boss when I first started doing massage, and I became very critical of him, and blah, blah, blah. And then one time in a deep, deep meditation, all of a sudden I became so appreciative because this person was creating an opportunity uh, for my work and doing what I'm here to do on the planet at the time. And I realized it was actually, uh, it was like a divine thing. It was, it was what would have, has been given to me in this life to do. And if we're grateful for what we have and for the, even the work that we have, not just the things, but the work that we do and the way that we can um, survive and, and, and function in this world with great appreciation and gratitude, um, this is a divine thing. So real health means being connected body, mind, and spirit, and ultimately taking things even further to understanding our deep internal nature as divine beings and uh, knowing that, that this body will pass at some point. You know, it's made up of material elements. But in the meantime, let's not clog it up with all kinds of toxins and junk. It's kind of like a, a, a lampshade. If a lampshade is, is white, white colored, then the light comes through nicely. But if you start you know, coloring or painting that lampshade black, the light doesn't come through. So in the same way, if we blacken our bodies with so many toxic substances, 
uh, then it's harder for the soul's light, for our, our light, our personal self-expression to come through. We're just, we're just making ourselves work so much harder than we have to. So that's really what the, uh, what the Total Life Cleanse is about. And that's what, what I think health is really about, is really about removing the obstacles to being the absolute best you can be and raising your consciousness simultaneously to reawaken to our divine identity. Mm, I love that. You were talking about even just taking care of things. And as I look out my studio window, here down at my very first truck I ever had, a Ford uh, F-150, 1991. Now the paint job is no longer red, it's more of a paint color, but just still runs like a champ, you know, just taking care of things, <laughs> taking care of our body. And we're gonna really just get into the main points now, the, you know, the TLC's essential principles. And every time I think TLC, I always think of the group, don't go chasing waterfalls, right? From the uh, 90s, the uh, all girl group. But let's talk about the principles of this book, and let's talk about, for the listening audience, simple tips to connect the, the body, the mind, and the spirit, and, you know, why is higher consciousness so important now with everything that we're going through, and we'll kind of finish out the show that way. I think that would be some really great information to share, and again, if you want to learn more about Jonathan and the great work he's doing uh, in Concord, Massachusetts. I hope to, when I get back out there after this pandemic, Jonathan, I hope to come visit this center. But it's thehealingessencecenter.com. Awesome. And you can also go for the book itself. You can go to light, uh, totallifecleanse.com. Those are the two websites. And of course, you can always get the book through the several major outlets like Amazon or uh, anything else, Jonathan, just for our listening audience, if I missed anything. No, but just know that we have a cleanse starting up next week, and, and we're doing it uh, virtually. So if anybody's interested, if they have any questions, I'd be happy to chat with them to see if it you know, might be a, a good fit for them or something that may, may be a benefit. Yeah, fantastic. The digital transformation, as we call it. So let's yeah. just talk about some tips and you know, maybe some of the stuff you're going to be offered in this upcoming uh, workshop and you know, the, the essential principles of this book. Sure. Yeah, so basically we're going to be removing some of the common stressors, and that's really important. So um, identifying the, the dietary stressors that, that get in the way of, of our optimal physical well-being. Um, so removal of those, some of those toxins and um, helping support optimal digestion, which is really, really important because in Ayurveda, everything is about digestion, physical digestion, emotional digestion it said ayurveda says the cause of all emotional imbalances are due to undigested experiences <clears throat> so this is where healing and therapy and you know uh, energy healing acupuncture so many different wonderful processes of personal growth it's really all about digesting undigested experiences and making and and from the, what do we extract from that we extract wisdom and healing from those experiences when we actually process and digest them. Just like good food is nourishing for the body, uh, 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 traumas that have been stored in the body are, is like a junk food. It's like a toxin. And when we can heal those and digest those and transform those into wisdom, it becomes a very powerful, liberating experience. So, you know, in, in the cleanse, what we really focus on is removing the obstacles and then definitely taking time every day um, at least 10 minutes once or twice a day to get really quiet. And that means we really recommend doing some very simple breathing techniques, uh, alternate nostril breathing. I call a meditation called tip of nose breath, where we interiorize the awareness. The, our, our, our energy can go in different directions, we, basically five different directions, which I won't go into right now, but one of them is in, in, internally. We can directly... We can direct our attention internally. It's a real thing. And when we do that, it's very, very healing. And we start to reconnect to our inner reality, our inner being, and ultimately to our inner consciousness, our pure consciousness. And by doing that, then we can connect and come from that place in our life, in our work, in our relationships, uh, how we move through this world. And I really see that... Um, Again, with these really, really challenging times, and there's so much data, there's so much information, and uh, you know, so many arguments and so many different ways of looking at things, that we can get so caught up in that. It's like a, it's like a web. We can get so caught up in that and then lose connection with the real, simple, and pure essence of who we are. And that is, to me, is the problem. It's, it's, it's less about honestly, if somebody 
you know, did this or did that, took this medicine or that medicine and, you know, has this political perspective or that political perspective because we can get caught in those arguments eternally. Sometimes we think these are new discussions. These kind of arguments have been going on since the beginning of time on planet Earth. It's called duality. And the thing is now with social media, it just brings it out in the open so much more. So it makes it even more charged <laughs> and more challenging. So we really have to get simple, really get connected, come back to basics, and then go within and uh, cultivate a higher consciousness and to reconnect to our own spiritual essence and to the divine source of everything. And by doing that, then there's a potential for real healing. And that's what the, the cleanse is all about. It's not religious, but it is related to spirit and real healing. So that's what that's what it's about. From from my perspective and from the Ayurvedic perspective. Yeah, and it's a really good perspective for our listening audience out there. Like I said, when I first read this book four years ago, when you first came on Inspired Living Radio in 2018, I've got it in my digital library. You open it out throughout the four years and the different practices. I'll be honest with you, Jonathan, I still to this day use that alternative uh, nostril breathing um, with the, uh, the hand, uh, closure, you know, the thumb and the, the, yep. um, the, I don't know what the position that you call it. I don't know the actual word for it, but it's I still to this day practice yeah. a mudra. There we go. Yeah, I yeah. still practice that with my breathing exercise as part of my transformations and part of my daily healing. And I also incorporate some of the, uh, exercise in the book. So if, if you're not familiar with this book, it also has some great visual aspects in some of the chapters about how to do certain, uh, you know, tension curls or, you know, vertical shoulder presses, back of the hand extensions and contractions uh, with this cleanse as well. And I actually incorporated some of those into my Qigong. So from this book four years ago, it's still part of my journey today. And cool. I'm going to just ask you before we run out of time here, Jonathan, what was your favorite chapter in the book? What, what really... <laughs> personally stands out to you as far as you know you wrote this book is there is there a favorite chapter that you really resonate with that's you know it's interesting i think that's a really interesting question because every chapter uh not every chapter but so many chapters um are very interesting to me um i would say i just love the connection between the uh the organs, the seasons, the emotions, uh, mm -hmm. all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Because I love, I love connecting things. And so one of my favorite mm -hmm. chapters, I don't have the book right in front of me. I think it was chapter uh, maybe 12, um, where it describes how both in Ayurveda and Chinese medicine, it goes through the whole process of, you know, what is the liver related to? Well, the liver, all the physical functions, mm -hmm. the emotional mm -hmm. functions of what are the emotional functions of the liver. Um, you know, so the liver holds anger, for instance, but it also holds self-assertion and vision and hope and things like that. So it makes all these really powerful connections. And I think if we begin to understand that, that we are so much more than this physical body, that even our organs uh, are related and they have functions on a physical, mental, emotional, and even spirit level, that um, right. you start to appreciate how amazing, you know, this human body is and, and the capacity and the Vedic literature says, says, now that you have attained this human form of life, um, it's considered so auspicious to have a human body. It's crazy how auspicious it is <laughs> because we have the real opportunity to, to wake up to who we really are uh, spiritually. And it's, it's not a small thing. So uh, this is the purpose of Ayurveda is to, is to create an opportunity for, for us to, to wake up as divine beings. And there's a lot of waking up on planet Earth right now and there's a lot of challenges, so I'm still yes, positive there is. that the waking up is gonna is gonna win the is gonna you know carry the flag, and we're gonna win this one. But it's gonna take a lot of work. Yeah, I agree with you. Crisis leads us to consciousness and that transformation, that awakening. Chapter twelve is Ayurveda and the eight elements. Chapter twelve. Yes. So, yep. and of course, twelve adds up to three. Three is a very powerful creative number. Even Tesla talked about it, and I know you got a couple quotes of, in Tesla in the book. And of course, the old Cheyenne proverb, our first teacher is our own heart. And that's where the journey yes. really begins. So before we end here, I always like to ask my guests, especially those that have come back a couple times to be on Inspired Living Radio, who or what inspires you for our current time and what we're going through? Wow. Um, 
You know, I would say one of my teachers, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, who mm -hmm. back in the 70s made a prediction. It was a 19, whatever it was. He made a prediction. He said 50 years later um, that this whole system that we're living in is going to tumble. And he didn't oh, say wow. it. He basically said, I mean, we, we, it, we, a lot of us just discovered this recently, actually. We have it on recording, and um, it's been going around. So this whole civilization of how it's been so much based on um, sort of you, you just overusing the resources of the earth and just wanting to take advantage of everything. And um, I mean, capital, I'm not talking, capitalism can be a good thing and competition can be a good thing. But the way we've been approaching things, it's, it just hasn't been working. And um, yeah, yeah. so all the systems are beginning to collapse. And um, there's great hope and possibility, but we just have to get through this together. So that's what I would say. We will. This too shall pass, as the old saying goes. So, Jonathan, thank you so much for coming on Inspire Living Radio. Again, you can check out the book at HealingEssenceCenter.com or TotalLifeCleanse.com. Total Life Cleanse, a 28-day program to detoxify and nourish the body, mind, and soul. Pleasure talking to you. Give Catherine a big hug for me. And we'll just finish with a nice Thomas Edison quote. The doctor of the future will no longer treat the human frame with drugs, but rather will cure and prevent disease with nutrition. Get this book on your bookshelf, guys. You will not regret it. Great information. Thank you so much, Jonathan. And until our Thanks, next soul adventure together, be kind, be caring, be compassionate, and most importantly, dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live, and discover that diamond within. We'll see you next time on Inspired Living Radio. Namaste.